And can I just remind everybody to, if you could just stay on mute, please. Um, if you do have any questions, could you pop them into the chat facility and hopefully we'll be able to get a chance to ask Chris some questions towards the end. So we are absolutely thrilled to welcome Chris Squire, Director of HR and OD, Somerset County Council. And as Lethan said, the team who won last year's PPMA HR and OD Team of the Year. Woo so all of us have had to fundamentally change the way we work in an unbelievably short time from changing physical work environments, redeploying colleagues, empowering managers, supporting well-being, and discovering what our workforce is capable of. HR and OD colleagues have had an unprecedented amount of work to do. Chris is going to share with us how Somerset County Council has coped, what went well, what didn't, and what we can learn for the future. So please give a very warm virtual welcome to Chris. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Can you hear me? We, can, Just not. we can't see you. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a bonus for everyone, isn't it? Uh, here we go. Let's try that. OK, welcome, everyone. Thank you, Julie. Thank you ever so much. And um, as Julie said, we were, we were HR team of the year 2019. And resting that trophy of us is going to be like taking the White House off Donald Trump, whoever wins. Or I don't know if that's been announced yet. But anyway, so um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, attending today. And thank you to Michael West as well for that um, utterly fantastic talk uh, just now. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that some of the stuff I go through in a moment is is gonna um, is just gonna flow from uh, from Michael's presentation, uh, some of the some of the pragmatic stuff that we've been doing. So, without further ado, if I share my screen, is that okay? We'll get on with it. I was just um, just um, are you on mute, Judy? Or okay. Yes, I am. So we've not got okay. the screen just yet. That's it, we've got it. Okay, and is my microphone okay? I'm getting a bit of feedback here. It's okay this yeah. end. Fabulous. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just I was just um, uh, mulling over um, a, a real life incident. So the the, the wonders of um, video technology and Teams meetings and Zoom and such like. I don't think this has happened to anybody else uh, on this call. But um, I was in a meeting a couple of months ago, a fairly formal meeting, which I don't know if makes it makes it any better or not. And uh, when when I heard the toilet flushing, not the toilet in my house. I mean the toilet flushing online. Um, but the person redeemed themselves for washing their hands for a good 20 seconds afterwards. So um, that was fine. So um, if you are doing that, make sure you're on mute as, as, as well. So I feel a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a fraud, really, uh, doing this presentation. Um, it's a little bit strange um, presenting on this one. So much good stuff has been done um, up and down the country uh, by, by colleagues. Uh, but Karen Gray, lover, asked me. And, um, and 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 I complied. So here we go. And um, if you've done more or and or better than us, fantastic. Sit back, smile smugly. Uh, but most importantly, let us know what you've been doing. So it's all about the importance of of, of sharing. So without further ado, here we go. Just trying to get myself into. So a little couple of issues. OK, so what we're going to cover here um, or what I'd like to say is, is is fairly lightning speed. Is that is that call to arms, the importance of of personal connection uh, data as well. So that sense for staff that, you know, we've we've we've, we've got um, sorry, the importance of data, real life data um, immediate to the situation. Then that sense of well-being, looking after staff, we've got your back. So the importance of staff feeling that. And then and then finally, um, did it work and how did it feel? So uh, what did what did staff say at the end of all of this? So the first few days, uh, six months ago, I believe, um, 17th of March, all staff told not to come into the office the following day. And, and this was possible. Uh, really good ICT meant we, that was instantly doable. Then over the coming days, we quickly, quickly realised we needed to know who we had, what skills they had, where they were, what they were doing and, and whether we could redeploy them. So. We sent this out to staff. It looks lovely. Um, a few stock photos, um, some, some nice fonts there. Um, 
SEC working together to maintain the delivery of critical services and we we went through uh, a number of skills we might be requiring um, of, of staff if we could redeploy them so so we, we did that uh, we sent this to managers for so roles to be filled by redeployment so fill out these forms managers and um, and let us know what kind of people you're going to require so start with that and that was great so we had a, a thousand staff by the way we we employ around about three and a half thousand excluding excluding schools um, so if you kind of take away all your frontline staff and such like actually a thousand staff completing the forms is pretty good um, and some managers completed their forms but when our redeployment team uh, got stuck in uh, we had um, you know, the responses like I'm a bit busy maybe in a couple of weeks oh, I can't possibly possibly release them for, for that role so we were a bit stuck so we wheeled out the chief executive, Pat Flaherty, a very, very passionate individual. Um, and, and in no uncertain terms, he told managers, and I want to give a very clear message to all managers, uh, where staff have volunteered for redeployment and where we have asked them to do so, I expect you to support this. This message is a clear direction from me to, to you to release staff on demand. Excuse me. If you have any concerns, your director will be able to clarify the position. So that went to managers and then to all staff. This is the power of personal connection, the story. I now have an urgent appeal for volunteers. We are establishing two new care homes, pop-up care homes, we were talking them, one in Yeovil, one in Wellington, with the potential of more to come. They're going to care for some of our most elderly and frail residents, so, you know, people able to connect with their own situations, looking after their elderly parents. As we look to safely discharge patients from hospital whilst we support and protect our NHS. You remember at the time, um, the the, the clamour was all about the NHS initially that clap for the NHS then clap for carers it was all about the NHS so again that language is coming out here and I think well, that was a stroke of genius on his behalf actually in short these homes will be our own local care versions of nightingales I need your help now so again that personal connection we urgently need volunteers who can help with meal preparation porters and important with care assistant duties so setting stuff out and in the final paragraph, it doesn't matter what you are doing at the moment, we can equip, equip you with the skills needed for these roles. If you're worried about your current work, don't be. We can sort things. So really, really connecting with staff on the back of that. And we had a surge with staff redeployed to nursing homes, registration services, PPE distribution, distributing ICT and home working kit to staff, amongst other things. And the lesson from this, the corporate comms look great. But it was the personal appeal and connection that delivered results. So the next section of this is about data. So um, uh, this will have, have the rocking in the aisle. So monitoring staff attendance and utilising availability and skill sets for redeployment. So actually, I think this is really cool. Just ignore that title. Um, I didn't write it, by the way. Um, and it, take this opportunity to say a big shout out to our ICT teams and ICT teams up and down the country. They've been absolutely brilliant through this. So um, when you log on in the morning at Somerset County Council, you're, you, you, have a, um, you go straight to um, a working status screen now. Um, so this is something we worked on with ICT. And um, it's a simple question. Ignore that box on the left. Are you available for redeployment today? Yes, no, or ready to redeployed. Okay, every single morning people are getting this. And then we get them to, to, to select their status for the day. So I'm in the office. Pretty unlikely, I've got to say. I'm working from home, very likely. Um, and all the way through to I'm quarantined, partially able to work. Um, and I think we were possibly a little bit optimistic when we had a box there saying non-working day, because who's going to log on then? Um, if you say you're available for redeployment, another box pops up and it just asks you, what can you do for us? You know, what can we what can we redeploy you into? This is all linked to the uh, Microsoft tool Power BI uh, to view attendance and availability status. So managers use this. They get the statistics of staff redeployed, self-isolating, quarantined or working from home on a daily basis. OK. So that feeds into another report. Uh, the redeployment team applies skills and availability criteria from requested roles. So, you know, we set up as part of my team. Um, I think we had four or five people just dedicated to redeployment. So hitting the phones, analyzing the data, sorting out what's required. And um, uh, and this was this was their input into it. And that they come through to a daily report again on redeployment matching, role matching and such like. And then the, the areas where we've requested redeployment roles. So it's also a 
enables us to look at pressure points, pinch points in the organization as well. We're still doing this, by the way. It's still going on. And actually, uh, with the figures looking as they are, thank goodness we are, I think. Right, a little return to a call to arms, part two, uh, systems works. It's not just the Somerset County Wood County Council workforce um, that we were, we were looking at here. We were looking across the system and a nice story here from our economic development team, uh, phoning hotels and pubs that might have, might have furloughed their workers. Uh, this was initially in the, in the Yeovil area in South Somerset. Uh, so a lovely quote here. I've spoken to my breakfast cook and she's interested in any catering roles or housekeeping. She's very good and recently done her level two in food hygiene. My 17 year old daughter is doing her A-levels and wanted care experience, which has been cancelled as she's working towards becoming a doctor. So she would like to help if possible. My 20 year old daughter is at uni home now and would also like to apply. Both girls are bright, kind and responsible. And apart from working in my hotel, have had various other roles. I also have a furloughed staff member who did 90 percent of her midwifery training and is interested in joining your team. So this was stunning. And yet it came off the back of the NHS call, didn't it, for volunteers and such like. But we were really delving down here, really contacting our business owners, residents and such like, and getting people to kind of join in with some of the, uh, the care requirements that we had. I asked the adult social care team, so what was key to, to rapid mobilisation of the adult social care and provider workforce? And they said there were two elements, uh, working much closer with community health colleagues, working across the care system, stepping in where needed. How many people can we get to work in care? For example, bank staff, because I don't know about your hospitals, but our hospitals weren't busy. They were running at 50% capacity because they cancelled all their electives. Um, we've now got access to two NHS staff banks for social care need. Didn't happen before. The clinical commissioning group, we, we took their clinically trained staff and redeployed them into care homes. And we had our social workers working eight to eight, seven days a week. The thing we found there, we also needed the same kind of reciprocal arrangement for NHS discharge teams as well. It didn't always happen. We, uh, our adult social care team had regular webinars with care providers from the director of adult uh, services and, and her deputies. And this was also reflected in the position we had in, in, in education, the daily calls with head teachers, leading to much closer and more productive working relationships, something they and we did not want to lose. So what we had here was, um, you know, fairly good relationships actually being brought into really positive, constructive relationships. Uh, so, you know, something that we've got to continue uh, into the future as well. And and one for the trade unions, actually. Um, uh, so we, yes, again, I'm sure everybody's done. Um, frequent, honest conversations with trade unions, full involvement in processes such as risk assessments and a real sense of working together. So a lot of informal work uh, with, our, with our staff representatives and trade union colleagues. And a couple of articles here. So um, off the, the Somerset Live website, uh, we were, I think we were the first actually in the Southwest to sign up to Unison's um, Stop the Spread pledge. So we were guaranteeing um, or ensuring that um, any care workers uh, from private sector care homes, if they were sent home with COVID symptoms or self-isolating, they would receive their full pay. Um, our testing that we set up, um, community testing facilities uh, early on in the pandemic, uh, were also welcomed and, and, and praised by Unison. I was about to get political there, I won't, I'll stop. Um, so my next section is um, this sense of we've got your back. And um, I think this really chimes with some of what Michael uh, was, was saying earlier on, uh, the kind of compassionate leadership, teams getting together, talking about issues and problems and such like, and how we've managed to do this uh, during, during the pandemic as well. So it's the importance of being and being seen to be on the side of staff. Uh, we were one of the first in the country to declare that no member of staff would suffer financial detriment as a result of COVID. Uh, we very quickly recognised that many staff with care and responsibilities would not be able to do their contractual hours. So made it very clear that would be OK. They just needed to do what they would do. So just to repeat that, their salaries were guaranteed even if they couldn't do their full contractual hours. We moved very, very quickly to guarantee existing and forecast contracts for agency staff, interims and supply teachers. So we wanted to keep our, our flexible, our temporary workforce on side as well, because at some point we would accelerate out of this. So we needed them there. There was no recourse then uh, during the pandemic uh, for uh, to, to unpaid leave, annual leave and carers leave in relation to COVID absence until late August, uh, when we were looking at annual leave data and realised actually there was um, uh, there had been a lack of leave taken this year in comparison to last year. So we needed to nudge staff into taking up some annual leave in readiness for um, uh, winter and uh, potential capacity problems if we had too much annual leave to take. 
And we know, we know this approach was hugely important. We have massive support from our trade unions and, and certainly Unison uh, cited us nationally uh, for, for, for this work. And a nice little quote, I've said nice, it was a nice, fairly harrowing quote. Um, uh, if I went through all of this without the kids being here, I would say it's better. But most days I just cry because I feel I'm doing both jobs, worker and parent badly. For this reason, I haven't coped well and have been very low at times. Well, at least that person didn't have to worry about their salary. And we know we've got a committed member of staff in return now. Um, and then another thing um, in, terms of, in terms of being seen to do things, um, fighting for your staff. Um, I had a bit of a, a, a Twitter rant uh, about PPE and a lack of PPE that was being distributed to local authorities in the care se sector. Um, so quite a few people joining in with that, which was, which was great to see. Um, we had shipments being taken from docks and such like undiverted to the NHS and such like. And yes, the NHS needed it, but actually, as we now know, our care homes needed it as well. Um, I asked my HR team just to do a quick one side summary of the things we've done as a team. Um, they've, they've responded magnificently. Um, apologies for the slight duplication there of the stuff in red. Um, and I'll, I'll go through those in a bit more detail in a moment. But, you know, we've um, uh, we facilitated the redeployment of 211 employees. We're not top in the country. Uh, we're in the top quartile. Uh, but there was some comparator work that the, the LGA was doing. Uh, so, um, so, so we know we've done fairly well there. Um, I don't know if I'm proud of this or not. 18 pages of staff frequently asked questions, a huge amount of stuff there. 19 pages of HR guidance for managers. The team was working flat out, turning stuff around within 24 hours. And um, uh, I think in hindsight, uh, we would find a better way of delivering that. And we're talking about that as a team at the moment because managers and staff were just overwhelmed uh, with, with guidance information. All the other stuff, video interviewing as well. So, you know, like, like most people here, we've, uh, we've been appointing people virtually. Uh, we've done a compare that before the pandemic, actually. Uh, but um, we've been doing that uh, as and we've been running virtual hearings for staff as well, disciplinaries and grievances. And yes, we have, we have led dismissals virtually um, as well. Face-to-face -face training, obviously, um, and the guidance that's been issued to managers and head teachers and such like around payment of temporary workers, uh, goodwill payments to keep those temporary workers on board, the furlough advice we've had to issue as, 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 as well. Um, shout out as well for our health and safety team and um, the work they've done with display screen equipment. We've actually shipped kit out to um, over a thousand members of staff now. I think. And um, and so, you know, we've got people's home offices really nicely set up. Um, and we've also been doing uh, display screen equipment webinars as well with our employee assistance program, Care First. Uh, and so we have a trained, we have a physiotherapist uh, on those calls as well. Those have been really, really well received uh, by, by colleagues. Um, induction process virtual and um, ICT training, obviously, as well. So let's go to that in a bit more detail. So uh, some of our well-being stuff, the, you know, again, the we've got your back side of things. Um, every Wednesday on our, on our um, networking tool, Yammer, uh, we run cheer sessions. And, and this is for, 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 for staff to praise colleagues, for managers to praise colleagues. And these are, these are hosted by a director, senior leader, um, in the organization. We always have a, a theme to it as well. So the last one was, um, uh, last week, it was the it was our children's social care principal social worker uh, leading that session as well. So we get really, really nice feedback there. Chief exec and, and us directors um, run staff question and answer sessions regularly. We now have hundreds of staff attending those. I've got to say that is a tough hour, a really tough hour because uh, the questions are brilliant and they all seem to be directed at me at the moment. So um, so uh, so I have to be on my toes. Um, Take 10, nice little initiative here. Um, we've asked colleagues to uh, just take 10 minutes, uh, phone a friend, uh, to you know, just check on their colleagues, somebody who they think might need a bit of support or just fancies a chat or whatever. So that kind of, um, I hate this phrase, but I'm gonna use it, the water cooler moments or the, the kettle moments or whatever. And again, some nice feedback there. On the right-hand side, a um, series of texts from uh, that I was copied into somebody got a screenshot and sent it on to me. Uh, it's from my registration services staff. So great idea from Somerset County Council. Have a read and get calling. Sounds like a good thing to do. What a great idea. Well done, SCC. A nice idea. Always happy to talk. And a lot of them are very happy to talk as well. We used our employee support networks um, to, to kind of reach out to our vulnerable uh, members of staff. Uh, so that's, that's, that's been working well. 
Um, display screen equipment I've mentioned, and then keeping active, you know, that, that sense of, you know, we, we know we have a lot of staff who just power their way through uh, from early in the morning till whatever time in the afternoon and evening, and um, the temptation there is not to get out. Um, so we've had a number of themed events. Uh, so uh, we had a, a walking competition, uh, Walk This May. Um, apologies if you've got an earworm after that one. Um, and uh, cycle Somerset. So how many times uh, we as an organisation could cycle around the perimeter of Somerset, figuratively, of course. Um, uh, that was during August. And we've got um, uh, another one coming up, uh, Leg It at Lunchtime. Uh, which is as the the evenings are now drawing in and 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 light it's getting it's getting um, it's getting lighter um, uh, much later in the morning as well. Um, so making sure that people are actually doing some exercise during the day, so helping them with that, and these always get a good response. Mental well-being, um, so a big focus on that um, uh, through webinars, advice, and such like. And then there was a um, just some support, recognizing that some staff would suffer. Um, as families um, financially from COVID because maybe their partner um, had been laid off, uh, furloughed or, or whatever, or was a, a sole trader and, and they were struggling to cope. So we, uh, we drafted in some, uh, commissioned some financial support and advice to help out there. And then we were using apps and other resources. So Every Mind Matters, public health guidance, uh, social signing. So a little crash course of people in, in some of the kind of uh, niceties of, of sign language and a calendar of events as well that I'll show you in a moment. Again, a couple of nice quotes that came through our latest staff survey. So Pat, the chief executive, Q&A sessions have been brilliant and very engaging. Support provided from the council has been brilliant. And I think the senior management Q&A sessions have been brilliant, being open to questions, updating us, and taking the time to speak to staff helps me to think that I'm valued as an employee. So this is a, just a screenshot from, um, from our, what we call our working well uh, uh, site, SharePoint site. Um, this is September's events, um, updated all the time. So you'll see the frequency of our, uh, our DSE webinars there, you know, bringing in our um, employee assistance program to help. If you're wondering, um, at the top of the second column in stitches, one of my team runs a, a knitting and crochet uh, group. So, um, you know, that, that happens over, over lunch times as well. And we also link this to advice from our public health team. So um, we have a working well group and public health uh, that's kind of joint representation from HR and, and, and public health there. Lovely quote, having come from an authority where none of this kind of stuff is available to staff, it's been very helpful and I love that SEC do this uh, for their staff. A couple of little videos, so we put video content on here. Um, so that's that's Louise, who's a, a commissioner, um, a commissioning manager in our, in our children's services team. So she's doing the social signing. And there you've got a remarkably calm looking director of public health, who I've got to say is not looking remarkably calm at the moment. So Trudy Grant, and she's fabulous. Um, and she was talking through mental health and looking after our mental well-being uh, during lockdown. So what we've got there is a really nice representation from the top of the organisation, uh, from a leader in one of our service areas, and just helping staff through some of this. So again, that connecting with staff and that kind of, you know, we've got your back through all of this. And some of the fun stuff. Um, uh, every Thursday. Um, so Clive, Clive Mallon, irrepressible Clive Mallon uh, from my team. And um, uh, he um, he's a bit of a quiz geek. And um, he said to me quite early, I said, Chris, I'd like to set up a, a, a quiz for staff um, that I'll run on, a, run on an evening. What do you think? I said, well, if it's your gig, you get on with it, just do it. And, um, and we're now on to our 20th virtual pub quiz. And that's held at 8 p.m. on Thursday. So we don't even pay people to be there. Um, and um, at the height of it, we have between three and four hundred people um, using Microsoft Teams on a Thursday evening just to come into this. And people setting themselves up as groups or working within their teams or across the authority or as families. So it's you know, from my, my perspective, uh, I've got my wife and my, my twin daughters who are 16 now. Um, and, and they insist, absolutely insist that we join this quiz every Thursday evening. So a real kind of coming together thing for the family as well. So, you know, Clive's done an absolute Brilliant, brilliant job for us there. And again, that quote, best bit of lockdown has been Clive's quiz, brings a great sense of camaraderie, has enabled me to interact within my own team socially more frequently. And the banter is something else, something to, you know, it's something to behold. So that's that's been fabulous. He's now running them fortnightly, so we're still going and, and we'll just see how that goes. But yeah, sort of regular, you know, 200 people um, still, still dialing in. 
And then crucially, what did staff say? So let's use some data again, shall we, uh, some metrics. So we ran a, um, a kind of special staff survey in August, just to check on how people have been doing. Um, the critical thing here, have we adapted to meet business needs? What did staff say, say to that? So 87% of staff agree that SEC and their business area have adapted to meet business need. Um, now, everyone's always going to agree their teams are better than the organisation. So over 90 percent of staff uh, said their team has adapted to meet business need. So actually, if you take this, if you take the neutral, the agree and the strongly agree, nearly 100 percent of staff um, are kind of agreeing with what we've done as an organisation. And then 90 percent of staff believe they've been kept well informed uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, which is which is great. Absolutely great. And dot, dot, dot. What did staff say? Uh, so some, some quotes here. Um, we had some concerning quotes as well. Um, I've just put the great ones up here, uh, but um, the, the, the majority were absolutely fantastic. So I think the county council's response has been outstanding, something we should be very proud of. I'm very proud of the way SCC has responded in very challenging circumstances. It's made me proud to work for the council. Thanks to the digital investment and work done a couple of years ago, we are in an excellent position. I'm really proud that we could all start working from home immediately with only minor hitches. Walk this May challenge, I found really helpful. It motivated me to get out and walking. And it felt nice to know I was part of something bigger and other people were doing it too. So that sense of community and camaraderie in the workplace as well, that we could keep going virtually. Everyone I've spoken to has commented positively about SCC. Um, and I think SCC have been amazing. My partner's experience with work hasn't been as good. And it was nice to be able to say how good SCC have been as both providers to the community and to their staff. Very proud of SCC. And then the final quote here, uh, mental support offered during these trying times has been refreshing. I've regularly reviewed and promoted the wellbeing calendar and where possible joined webinars and taken notes to share with my team. I've also used 10 minute calls to keep friendly dialogue up with my friendly colleagues. And the works quiz is also great fun. When I've been able to join, I've done so with my family. It's helped make things feel more normal. Thank you to all those involved in supporting us. And then finally, I think thank you to all in HR and organisational development across the public sector. You, we, we've made a massive difference, critical difference uh, to the uh, pandemic response in, uh, across this country. And I think we should all be very proud of yourselves, proud of ourselves. And then finally, just the last bit of fun there, um, we had on Yammer, um, a kind of show us your dog, show us your cats kind of thing. That's Mike, my my mostly border collie, a little bit of Labrador there, all dressed up for a posh meal that we were doing. Um, and I think that's a practice run for the uh, the next PPMA ball, actually, I'd love to attend. So when we can get that up and running, he'll be he'll be my plus one. So thank you, everybody. Uh, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference and, and, and thank you for listening to me for the past half an hour. Wow, thank you, Chris. Lots and lots of information in there and some fantastic achievements. Um, really demonstrating some fantastic things there. Um, there are one or two questions, um, but also some really good comments as well. Loving the marketing of these initiatives, very clever. Amazing response from your IT service. Um, it would be good to understand how easy it was to get the whole organisation to work effectively together for the greater cause and not just their specific area of responsibility. Did you want to pick that up? Briefly, or do you want to kind of respond? Just, right, I'm just reading the comment from Mike, so um, I'll, I'll pass that on to my dog. Uh, sorry, which one was that? The um, first language. Uh, which one was that? So how easy was it to get the whole organisation to work effectively together for the greater cause, and not just their specific area of responsibility? Right. So, let's get let's get this straight. Um, uh, the Give you a, a, an example actually from Buckinghamshire Council. So, it's talking with Sarah, Sarah Brickman Murphy, um, and most of you will know that Buckinghamshire became a unitary authority on the 1st of April. So, brought together, I can't remember, was it five district councils and one county council? And, um, and Sarah said after um, a few months after that that um, COVID was the best organisational development tool they could have had because everybody came together so they forgot their kind of tribal loyalties and, 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 and tribal sorry tribal commitments and such like um, and i think that that's partly it because you know we are very good in an emergency aren't we as as, as um uh, as a nation uh or as creatures and we all tend to pull together there so i think there was a lot of that but i really do think that personal connection between the leadership team and members of staff was uh was of just paramount importance um you know your chief exec and your directors putting themselves up there 
um, and um, doing what they could to put an arm around people, to answer questions, to reassure and such like. And it was just, just that importance of staff feeling, most staff feeling uh, that actually we were on their side. So a lot of the interventions, you're certainly that thing I spoke about first, the, the guaranteeing people's pay uh, was crucial um, as a policy or as an approach. And um, and just just let people know. Hang on, no, they are they are batting for us. They absolutely they've got our interests at heart here. So I think those are the things that personal connection and backing it up with certain crucial policies as well. Okay. Lots of really positive comments and some other questions. So if you it's okay with you, Chris, maybe we could forward them to you and you could perhaps give us a response. Yeah, happy, happy to do that. Yeah. Can I just say the first time I put a tie on for uh, for six months, and I thought I'd forgotten how to how to put one on. So uh, there's my achievement for the day. We're very honest, thank you. <laughs> oh no, thank you so much, Chris. That was fantastic.